Hello Thaddeus, it's Thursday. I'm currently outside because I wanted to see how the camera would do out here. I'm also taking the dog for a walk. I've been reading a lot today too, so I've been inside almost all day long and it's, you know, it's not a warm day out per se, but it's not chilly and freezing. So it's a nice day to get outside. Well, it's gonna be the future soon. I won't always be this way When the things that make me weak and strange get engineered away So I think my hair is about as long as it used to be in the introduction video. There's quite a few points in your video that I'd like to respond to. The first one being your idea of using technology to advance kind of society and especially our uh, political situations. Now Thaddeus, you mentioned your Twitter account and how you never use it. Well one of my side projects that I haven't really done much on is to get your Twitter account a bunch of followers for no really good reason seeing as you never use it. I just think that it'd be really great that one of the most followed Twitter accounts is something that nobody has ever posted a tweet on. And so for those of you who are interested in helping in this project, uh, there'll be a link down in the thing below. See I'm actually pointing in the right direction this time until YouTube decides to make another layout change and screws everything up again. Link to Thad's Twitter down below, you can go ahead and follow him and that will put us one person closer to, I don't know, an arbitrary number of followers that in no way is as many as Aston Kutcher has for some reason. And you suggest using Twitter as a way for Congress people to respond to how they voted on legislation. I really like that idea because mainly I've had it before that if I was going to be a Congress person, I would write responses on why I voted certain ways on legislation to explain to people that while in fact I probably would support the broad over idea of the bill, all the writers and attachments and amendments to it make it a vapid piece of junk that won't actually solve the problem, which is so endemic of everything Congress does. My kingdom for a bill that actually looks 10 years in the future and tries to make a long-term plan to solve a problem. The other big thing with technology that we really could be doing is actually implementing the technology into our infrastructure. We have plenty of things like solar panels, high-speed rail, efficient public transportation that we so often don't implement. And whether this is by a lack of foresight or active political dissuasion from implementing them is a different story. But even things like hydroponic farms and other various ways of growing food that we could be using to help feed populations, we're not doing because they're not exactly entirely profitable yet or been shown to be profitable, but would be highly useful to places around the world where we do have massive food shortages. Now granted, some of these areas can grow their own food if they're growing local crops rather than say cash crops, such as former colonial holdings that now have kind of switched over to cash crop agriculture and they're not actually mean making and growing sustainable crops for their own populations to be able to feed themselves. Sustenance crops, not sustainable, though they would be more sustainable because they're plants that have evolved in the environment that they're trying to grow plants in, and thus they use less resources per se because they're more hospitable to, you know, a more hot African climate or South American climate, whatever climate they're trying to grow in. I think my dog might have been pooping in the background of that. Ow. On to books. You mentioned Haruki Murakami again, and you're now not the only person to have recommended him to me. So what I'd like from you is to recommend to me which Murakami book I should read first since I haven't read any of it ever, and I should really correct that oversight. So I want to know which book you think is the best. Preferably probably in one that's an ebook. I don't know, I haven't looked if they're on or not. Which brings me to today's featured books, Ray Bradbury and the Norton Anthology of Critical Theory. Second edition. You mentioned how you were upset that Ray Bradbury doesn't come in, you know, an ebook format, which I, for the life of me, can't understand why. Hopefully, now that he's died and, you know, his body of work is finished, there will be no more Ray Bradbury written works. They're putting together a complete collection. A member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters, who's one of their founding members, was Mark Twain, otherwise known as Samuel Clemens. I can only hope that. Library of America, like they do with so many other classic American authors, starts to put out full anthologies of his works. They're those black books that you find that are kind of thick and have kind of the blue stripe on them. Over the winter break, I polished off this collection of Ray Bradbury short stories. There's like a hundred of them in there that he himself personally selected. And even though they're not all science fiction, they're all still really good. There's one particularly about these people in Ireland and this guy who owned a bunch of fine wines who died and wanted to take it to the grave with him and they basically come to the idea of well what is the definition of 
getting into the grave with him. I won't spoil it, but it's a very good story that I very much enjoyed. And it was that Ray Bradbury book that I had been reading that inspired Fiction Fridays for Blog Simber. And I'm kind of sad that you don't have easy access to it. And much like you had the principal stand on ebook prices, I tend to have kind of a principled stand on video games. That there's a lot of games that I would like to play, but they cost over five dollars. For me, I have a kind of use value approximation for a lot of games that they're not really worth more than five dollars to me, which is why a lot of games that aren't indie games I don't own and have never played because I'm not willing to spend more than five dollars on them because they're just kind of derivations on the same types of games. Most games aren't novel puzzle platformers like Portal series. They don't have really good stories behind them or really interesting gameplay, which is really what you find a lot of times in indie games and given the humble indie bundle and uh, the pricing on Steam, a lot of those were actually within the price range that I'm willing to pay. And the last thing I'd like to suggest is we have the Norton Anthology of Critical Theory. I if I remember correctly, you were going to lug this gigantic tome over to China with you. So, what I'd like to propose in the interest of both of us ever getting around to reading all of this is that we start doing a theorist of, a week, of the week. We take, we start at the beginning and we just keep reading one of the theorists of the week. Technically, we're already behind if we wanted to start at the beginning of the year, but I don't care that much. I just want to have a reason to get through this entire book, and the Theorist a Week idea seems like a good way to do that, that isn't too taxing, and doesn't have us reading too much in one week, and allows us time to get done all of the things that we want to get done. Thaddeus, I will see you in the future.